It's going. There you go. Eat your kale. That's good. <laughs> on to our keto chat episode of the day. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for watching. Uh, and those of you watching the replay, thank you so much for tuning in and watching later too. So excited to be here. Oh my gosh, we have a fantastic lineup. I'm also really excited because I have my voice back. The last three days I've had laryngitis and now it's back to normal. So something was keeping me from talking to you guys. Uh, Aruji's eating his salad, which is great. Um, you guys, I'm so excited about our show tonight. So the topic of tonight is spring refresh. Using this time as an opportunity to reset rather than giving up. Uh, one of the focuses, one of the reasons why I revamped my show and started doing it live every night was we're at a time where everybody's anxious and overwhelmed and super stressed out. And I want to give back. I want to serve all of you out there watching this and give you the best support strategies, tips uh, for staying healthy, uh, mind and body at this time. And so I'm reaching out. One of the best things about this time is I've got all the best people that are totally unbooked right now. So I can bring you all the best of the best to be here and just to share all their expertise with you. So I've got a very diverse lineup for you tonight. Uh, as every show going forward, I'm excited about everybody I've got booked coming up too. So, um, so let me just do a quick little intro. Um, I'm just going to say the names of the people that are here uh, briefly and what they do. And then I'm going to give each of them about 10 or 15 minutes to share with you their best tips for spring refresh. Um, and uh, then, so those of you that are watching live, please comment throughout this, uh, ask questions because this is live interactive. And also we appreciate those of you that are um, watching the replay too. So go ahead and put comments. Uh, if you're watching the replay, put the comments as well, because we're going to come back and, and answer those as well too. So hi, Jane. Jane's here from Redmond. Let me just show her comment on here. So thank you, Jane. Um, those of you, if you'd like to be featured on here, um, it's a little thing about the app that uh, it needs to have permission to be able to show your name and photo from Facebook. Uh, John's back here too. John was here last night. Thank you, John, for being here. And uh, so you just need to go to um, streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. And that's going to allow your photo and your name from Facebook to pop through into this app that we're using here. So go ahead and go do that now if you're watching, uh, if you're watching the replay as well. Well, not so much, but I'm here. I'm dedicated. I'm going to be doing this for at least the next two weeks straight every single night. That's how much I want to get out of the house that I can't get out of the house. So, uh, all right, so um, thank you all again for watching. My name is, oh, I should introduce myself first. I'm Carol Freeman. I am a board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist. I specialize in helping people follow a ketogenic diet for weight loss that is actually sustainable because they find the lifestyle that they can live with and actually keep it off. So thank you all for being here. And um, so let me just really quickly introduce all of our guests that we've got here. We've got Brenda Reese, who is an author and forgiveness coach who believes in the forgiveness, uh, well, that believes that forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. Um, and by teaching that forgiveness is a choice and a trainable skill, she, gets, she helps guide women in becoming masters of their own fate as they unapologetically step into their own power, stop settling and find authentic joy in their personal and business lives. So welcome, Brenda. Thank you, Carol. Uh, we also have Lisa Fisher. So I've met Brenda before. We've done an interview maybe a couple of years ago, but uh, Lisa's brand new. So I'm excited to get to know her. Lisa is a wardrobe analyst, speaker, and owner of Live Love Image Strong. Oh, I said that wrong already. Uh, Live Life Image Strong. I get her business name right. Sorry about that. Uh, a curriculum of services to help women increase confidence in their visual appearance and feel congruent how they show up. Wonderful. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. And Barunji, just to mix things up a little bit, um, for each of my shows, you guys, I also do uh, stand up comedy. So for each of the shows going forward, I have a guest stand up comedian that's going to be on each of the shows, giving you a different perspective, trying to bring us some light and laughter and humor to this whole situation because, frankly, laughter is one of the best things that we can go to right now. So, uh, so Barunji is. 
a Ugandan comedian based out of Seattle, Washington. Although he initially moved to America for college, he quickly found a different way to fall into debt, stand-up comedy. Uh, within five years of performing, he has hit stages in multiple cities, including Portland, Denver, Boston, Phoenix, San Diego, and Los Angeles. He was featured on the best of the fest list at Burbank Comedy Festival in 2018. Oh, way back when we could still do comedy live. Uh, earlier this year, he opened for D.L. Hughley in Seattle. I was actually uh, at the show that he met D.L. Hughley. But well, welcome, Garuji. Uh, good to be here. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, John's saying that we could use some laughter. That is for sure. So um, thank you, John, for being here again. Oh, and he says, and a stiff drink. Yeah, so uh, tonight there's a few drink minimum, whatever you choose. I'm having... Um, uh, polar grapefruit flavored seltzer, everyone. So <laughs> two drink minimum. Uh, yeah, uh, water. <laughs> uh, all right. So we're going to start out with Brenda. Brenda, I'll let you introduce your topic and uh, ready, set, go, Brenda. All right. <laughs> it's good to be here. And I love this platform. So thank you, Carol. And what I was thinking about is when we were talking about a spring refresh is to have a kind of a resiliency plan because this is what I've been talking a lot lately for people because we're being thrown kind of sideways, right? We've been sideswiped. And so some of us are finding that we're frozen, that, that we're not even able to do a normal routine. We don't know what to do. So eating is thrown off, exercise is thrown off, you know, business, we've got the kids in the house, the spouses, all of that stuff. And so really the first thing is that I encourage people is to just stop and breathe. Forgive yourself for all the thoughts that you're having, <laughs> that the kids are frustrating you, that the spouse is frustrating, that everybody's frustrating, and that it's okay, that it's quite normal. And that, you know, that the habits that you have, if you haven't created habits yet, this is a good time to start creating some habits. And a good thing to do is to be able to see what is important in your life right now, because that's what we're all being asked to do. We're all being asked to kind of go, okay, I've been doing some habits that maybe weren't working for me, but now, now I have a time. Maybe I can. Do I add like that more humor into, into my day? Maybe I take more breaks. This is what's really important to have our bodies reset. This is a mindset, heart set, body set, reset. And so, you know, a lot of us too are feeling a lack of motivation. And even though we want to go out and do things and we want to feel better, you know, we're feeling that lack of motivation. And the one thing that I encourage people to do is to take one small action towards something, just anything, one step because really right now we have to simplify. We really have to understand our nervous systems are on high alert. And so what we can end up doing is we can end up eating all the wrong things. We can end up drinking all the wrong stuff. We can end up doing things that we don't wanna do, especially I've had several clients that are going, I don't wanna get out of bed. You know, so this is a really neat time to be able to go, okay, let's move it a little bit into gratitude. Let's move into, even though it's kind of hard to do, what we can do is think of three to five things that we're grateful for, just three to five. Because what I do in the morning, and this is what I, what I help people with, is like before you even get out of bed, set your mind to go, okay, what is it that, how do I wanna feel today? Not even do, it's about feel. How do I wanna feel today? And just kind of imagine that feeling and bring it into the body. And then you can go into the three to, yes, uh, I'm just going to pause and and those of you watching right now, go ahead and type in the comments. What are the things you're grateful for right now? So type type those three things in right there. Let's make this interactive. You're not just here as a innocent bystander. You're here to actually get some results. So go, go for it. Brenda. Well, yeah, it is because I've been on a gratitude list where it's a bunch of a bunch of women on a gratitude list, and we've been posting for 16 years now and on a gratitude list every day. And so, but what I, during this period of time right now, daily, this is what we need to, we need to bring it in daily. And what I like to do is do that three to five things that I'm grateful for and which is really important. Um, and then also to close out your evening, close out your night with three to five things you're grateful for because that kind of sets your mindset for the evening. And it, what it does is it helps us to start looking for things during the day to be grateful for. 
And it's even better if you share it with someone. So if you have someone in the house, share it with them going, you know what I'm grateful for is this. And this is a great thing to do with kids. If you've got kids, it's like, this is so good. And also even with a friend texting, Hey, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful for this. And let's just kind of start a gratitude wagon is what somebody said earlier today. And exactly grateful to be healthy. I love that because that's what a lot of us are saying too. And the other thing that I want, people to know is like when we can focus on that one little step or focus on gratitude but also what is the one thing that I want to get accomplished today just one and when we focus our brain we get actually it gives our brain it relaxes our brain it takes it away from the multitasking and it actually mm -hmm. takes a breath and it's able to we're able to get stuff done and what we realize is how much stuff how many what are we doing to our bodies all the other times and that's what this period of time i think is for is a reset anyway mm -hmm. away from the busyness away from the things that are distracting us from what is really important and so and then to to close it out would be just to kind of realize when we're when we are responding that we can choose to respond versus react because there's a lot of reaction going on right now mm -hmm. and really understanding what is that how do i learn how to respond okay so responding is coming from a place of calmness, right? It's where we take a breath. It's where we pause. Because we catch ourselves before we eat the wrong foods, before we do the wrong things, or before we like go nuts or yell or scream, because that's what's happening, is to just pause and take a breath. And then that centers us, which is amazing. And this sounds really simple. It is. It's hard to do in the moment. But then when you come from that, you come from this place of calmness and peace. And that's where we want to be able to come from. When we react, we're coming from a place of hurt and we're coming from a place that's going to cause damage. Right. And so it's like a, it's like an animal. Right. That's in a corner. They're going to come out fighting. And that's what a lot of us are doing right now. We're very triggered and we're and we're getting our little buttons pushed. So we don't we want to be able to respond. We want to breathe. And then, you know, because when you pause. Okay, then you breathe, that centers your body. Then you can ask, what is the outcome that I truly desire? Because really, how? what do you want? An interaction with a person or yourself? What is it that I really want to do right now? Or what is it that I feel that I need to do? And then you can take action on it. You can step away. You can go for a walk. You can ask for forgiveness <laughs> if you've said something you didn't want to, you know, you didn't want to say. And you can also forgive yourself at that moment in time. And so, and then talk it out. I highly encourage. Conversation is so important during this period of time right now, especially isolation, especially for extroverts, right? Mm -hmm. We need to talk. And even introverts, we need to share it because when we get it out of our bodies, it's going to make a whole difference. Mm -hmm. So yeah. give, give us a thumbs up in the comments or a yes, if this is resonating with you, if this is feeling like something that it would be useful to you. Um, so give us, give us a comment there. We've got uh, five of you watching live at all. And those of you that are watching the replay as well, go ahead and give us a comment. All of that is good stuff. So. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right. And uh, all right. Is that uh was that complete, uh, Brenda? Was there more to your? Yeah. No, I think keeping it simple right now is what I'm doing with everybody I'm talking to. I We just, overload is just not where, where, where we need to be. We need to have a little fun in our lives. We need to get outside. We need to have some laughter. Uh, you know, like you were talking comedy. And we also need to dress really well. And I that's what Lisa's here for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it does. It makes a difference when yeah. you dress, right? When you don't stay mm -hmm. in your sweats and t-shirt, that's what I've done. And that's what she helped me do. She helped me learn to do that. So, Yeah. Uh, John's asking if you post the link to my thread. So you want to pick, post the link to this group that we're in. So it's uh, facebook.com forward slash keto chat is what's going to get you there. And yeah, so invite your, your friends. Uh, I know, John, you had a post on your personal page earlier today about who's struggling um, to eat healthy at this time. We had a bunch of people that talked about, it's really common right now. People are really stressed out. They turn to food, yeah. they turn to poor eating habits and, and uh, you know, kind of a stress reaction. So um, 
having, you know, switching your focus to gratitude. It's really powerful. So, um, and, so and, learning to, and learning to take a breath, right? Before you reach for the alcohol, the whatever it is, a food, whatever that is, that that just that pause is good. Brenda, uh, Jane says she loves your advice. Thank you, Brenda. Um, so any of you that are here right now with us, if you have any questions for Brenda, now's the time to put them in the comments. Uh, I'm actually going to ask each of our other guests if they have any questions for Brenda or any comments about gratitude. So us? Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm just making sure. <laughs> yeah, Brenda, first of all, I just wanted to, to say I'm so inspired by you. I met you, I believe, five years yeah. ago, and yeah. you were just starting your business. And I knew then that, oh, my gosh, this woman is going to do amazing things because of your heart and spirit for others and your story of what you've been through and your own practice of forgiveness. And so my question around forgiveness is, you know, when, since we have a lot of time, we have time on our hands and to be intentional is, you know, if, if there's something resonating in us, like, oh, I do want to uh, maybe, maybe face some conflict or face a difficult situation with an individual and it's around the subject of forgiveness. What is a way like to reach out that seems authentic and genuine, like versus a text? Like what, like, can you maybe just give an idea on how to even bridge that? conversation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. The conversations are really important right now. One, because we are being triggered, right? And, and for me and my work, being triggered is good. Because when we're triggered, that is showing something within ourselves that needs to be healed. Otherwise, we wouldn't be triggered by it. And so in, in my work, and so what we get to do is we get to stop Lisa, it's like if you're if somebody's triggering you like in a conversation or if somebody's hurt you in the past. Right. And you're really you're or they say something hurtful because I just was talking with a woman about that today. It's like, OK, let's stop a minute. What is the emotion? What is the feeling you're having and where do you feel it in your body? Where is that? Because that's important for you to sit with first yourself and get and get kind of uh, used to it. We can even ask ourselves, "What is this? What what is this about?" And see what comes up for us because our bodies are great messengers. Mm -hmm. It'll tell us. Then the second part of that is to be able to take the breath so that we come from the heart space, and that's what the pausing and the breathing will get us. Be heart centered, and then reach out to that person and say to them you know, hey, I would like us, if you're up to this, have a conversation about <clears throat> blank because I felt this way when this happened. You know, when we take responsibility, right? We take ownership. We gotta be aware of something first and then we get to take ownership for our feelings and, and know ourselves. And then we can reach out and say, hey, let's have a conversation around this if they're open. Now, if they're not open, we get to allow that. We can't push it. We've got to allow that. And, mm -hmm. and then we get to step back and go, okay, I've done my part and say, hey, I'm here if you're ever ready to have a conversation or because I'd really like to talk about it. Then this other thing is if you can't have a conversation and you still feel yucky inside, uh, that's a technical term, yucky, then, <laughs> then, you get to, you know, then write them a letter, but don't send it. Wow. It's powerful. <laughs> Right. It, it, may I ask, is that this, could that be, or is that the same potentially as journaling or is that two totally different things? No, it's different than journaling. Okay. You can definitely journal about it. You can definitely journal because that's powerful in itself. But when you write a letter to the person telling them how you feel and how they hurt you is really good mm. because you get it all out. You don't send it and then you can sit with that. And then you can also write a second letter back from them to you if you're sitting in their shoes. Ooh. But you take a space in between. Give yourselves a couple, give yourself a, a, some time in between the letters. It's wow. powerful. Thank you. Thank you. And what a blessing that we do have this time to yes. do this sort of work, Brenda. Oh. That's we easy. do have the time. That's what's so good about this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
That's the problem with emails. It's easier to send stuff <laughs> and you can't pull it back too quickly. <laughs> no. Is That's it what it is. 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 Spurungi is what uh, send an email and then you're like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, good. that's why the pause is important. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Really good. All right, Bert, 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 Bert. let's see what kind of question you have. Yeah, my question is uh, about forgiving yourself. Mm. Like, oftentimes, it's, it's a little bit easier to, not easier, but compared to yourself, it's easier to forgive other people. Uh, but especially in this weird time where we're confined, uh, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to be mad at ourselves. You know, let us say you're like, okay, today I'm not going to drink. And then you, you have like a whole evening of just like festive drinking and you're like, what? Uh, I told myself <laughs> I wouldn't do this yeah. and I did it. So how do we go about forgiving ourselves? Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you for asking that. So forgiving ourselves and forgiving others is basically kind of the same thing. Okay. What we need to do, though, because all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. When we look at it from the uh, from the ability of that people are reflecting back to us what we feel inside of ourselves. That's one. But two, when we have done something that we feel shame about or guilt about, that's where we need to call it out. So, for instance, if I drank too much, which I used to do a lot <laughs> uh, before I got sober. I did that a lot. And so I had a lot of shame. And so the best thing for me to do was to be able to call it out. That's the awareness piece and be able to go, okay, I did this. How do I want to feel different? Because two things, one, do I need help? Do I need help with my drinking? That's where I had to look. Um, because I was going to that quite a bit, right? And I did need help, but some people don't. Some people just are using it, you know, as a crutch. They don't need help. But do I need help for one? And number two is what then I can take this and I can go the same thing like with Lisa's. I can write down what was I feeling before I started drinking? What, what are these thoughts that I was having mm -hmm. that caused me to do that? And then what do I do instead of those thoughts? How can I help those thoughts? How can I change them? And sometimes I need somebody else. I need a reflection back, you know, right? I need somebody else to help me with the thoughts and how can I reframe them? And what, what other thoughts can I think? And then the other part of this is when I had so much shame, I had to talk to somebody because shame does not, does not do well in the dark, right? When we keep it secret, we are only as sick as our secrets. So that's what was really killing me was that, was holding it inside. If you eat too much or you drink too much, you know, we're all holding that in and it's weighing us down. And so the best thing we can do, because we can do the same thing, we can do the letter to ourself. This is so, it's such a beautiful thing to do. We can do a letter to ourselves. The first one is like, why the heck are you doing that? You know, really kind of do the, do beat yourself up, get it all out. And then the second letter is coming from a place of love and compassion and empathy. Mm -hmm. Yourself saying, oh, you know what, Burunji, I, I understand now why I was doing that. I understand that I was overwhelmed. I understand that the kids are driving me nuts or I understand yeah. that, you know, I lost my job or I understand. So no wonder I wanted to drink like that. When you start to do that and then you bring in the gratitude and you bring in the feelings that you want to replace it with, it's powerful, powerful. Wow. How many of you watching right now are starting to feel a little inspired to write a letter to yourself? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Give us some comments if they, if you're thinking uh, you might need to write a letter to yourself for forgiveness right now. Did that help answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So good. All right. Uh, if any of you have questions for Brenda, go ahead and put those in the comments right now. And uh, we're going to move on now to Lisa Fisher. Uh, I can't wait to refreshing your personal space and maybe our wardrobes. This is a good time to clean out the closet, isn't it? it is. 
So is. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just terrific to be here. And I was so inspired when you reached out. I, um, I, I love this. And uh, today's topic, uh, you know, the refresh, right, is just right up my alley. Because with my clients, uh, we're talking about the subject of, you know, the spring refresh and in especially in the closet. And it feels like <clears throat> that the three times that usually most people are in their closet is like that January time frame around the resolution. Mm -hmm. And then in the spring uh, and then in September, because it's like after the summer, kids are back in school. It's almost like a, a new beginning for a lot of people. And so super appreciate, you know, this uh, platform and this whole refresh idea. Carol, it's awesome. Yeah. It really is. Um, would you like, what's your thoughts? Would you just like me to talk about a little bit of give some tips around the refresh in the closet? Yeah, I would love that. And also the other thing, a lot of my clients are on a weight loss journey and they're starting to lose weight. And so if you want to weave in some tips about, um, you know, cause I know a lot of the ladies I'm working with are like, they've given up at, at least when they start out, they they've given up. Like I just cover my body. I, I wear, you know, not very attractive things. And a lot of them, have a whole wardrobe that is lots of sizes, right? Like the ladies I'm working with have been dieting for decades and their scale has gone like this up and up and up over the years. Um, and so, you know, any tips that you can weave in too about as they're on their weight loss journey of coming down, um, you know, yeah. Okay. You, you're nodding. So I don't need to say anymore. So. I have some juicy tips. I have some juicy tips. Yeah. Uh, all right. So the, the whole idea Right. So just I'll give you my point of view. And the idea is uh, with having some time on our hands is considering doing some things that, OK, does this activity serve me? And a lot of people were hearing like, all right, I'm getting organized. I'm decluttering. And of all of all the spaces to declutter, consider the closet. And here's a couple of reasons why is if you think about it, uh, the closet is one of our most private spaces. You know, we have our bedroom, our bathroom, and then our closet, you know, is relatively close proximity. And uh, it is a, just a private space. And of the hundreds of closets have had the opportunity to be invited into is there's a sense of angst almost like, oh, to invite you into my closet is really this thing. And so you find people have apology zones. They're like, well, these ones I, 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 I have these cause I want to wear those again. And this was back when they always have a story with their clothes. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's why I love it so much is because it's the opportunity for like getting to the core of our authentic self of who am I today. And then the idea is, how can I create a closet that serves the individual who I am right now? Not who I was last year, five years ago, 10 years ago, but the person I am today. And so with that context, Carol, is, is doing a closet edit. And so just a couple points is this. Number one, reserve some time in the calendar to, to time block, like to, to block out some serious space. And I usually say five hours to focus, mm. okay, to really see this project through, mm. or 30 minutes a day for just picking out some things, or, you know, a daily challenge to maybe edit one thing. But let's take the like the five hours to focus. Like if we're really going to take this on as a project, here's the here's the tip is number one, remove every single thing out of the closet and bring it out onto the bed. Mm. So it's alive and it's in real time. And then here's the deal is number mm. one is the non-emotional side is just separate out the seasons. So separate out spring, summer and fall, winter. So like, all of like that's goal number one so like all fall winter gets to go over here 
and all spring summer gets to go over here because the in at least in my point of view the number one frustration of not being able to really know what you have in your closet is all the four seasons are stuffed into one space so do you share a closet with your wife i mean uh, do you you got like this much room and she has the rest or she takes up all of it. I put my 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 clothes on the floor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. So um we just moved um uh, this last year, five months ago, and we moved from well, we've moved twice in three years. We moved from a large home to that had ample closet to a second home with minimal closet to now we're in a 1200 square foot apartment by choice with I'm telling you it's it's not even the six foot closet and we share mm -hmm. and I will say that it's not an issue because mm -hmm. of some of the practices of, a, of editing out what doesn't serve you well you don't want to have summer clothing in your winter season because we're not we're, we're it doesn't serve us to be in our closet because we're not wearing those things. Oh, so, so yeah, Lisa, where do you put them? So, so you take them out of the closet yeah, and then put them like in a case and put it under the bed or something. Lots. There's so many great products. Yes. That is one idea is to put them in a storage container and uh, one, one area is under the bed or you could, some people put them in the, the, the plastic bags and you have that machine that sucks the air out. So it makes them really small. And then you can file those in a container. We use our storage unit um, to house uh, the garments that are the previous season in wardrobe bags. And they're just hanging mm -hmm. in our storage unit. So the idea is when I walk in the closet is I have accessibility and visibility to what serves me for the current season is one, one, wow. one idea. And then, and then after you've done that is the second thing is to go ahead and just try everything on. So you need a full length mirror. And so when you're trying things on, so Carol to say like, okay, well, what if I'm on the journey of weight loss? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> good, so good. As, as a matter of fact, a gal I'm working with, that's her journey. And she recently lost 20 pounds and she has 10 more to go. So what we're doing is saying, hang the things in the closet that currently fit. However, have a garment bag that has the next size down items, but they don't get to go in your closet because they don't yet fit. So the whole idea is, have in your closet what serves you now because that's your reality mm. and it this, this those two tips totally help with, help with the overwhelm because when we open a closet door and we see all these cl clothing it makes us feel like we have abundance and we have so much and then we we step back and we say i, I, I don't i don't know it's, I, I don't have anything to wear <laughs> Right. I have nothing to wear. Paralysis from too many choices. Then. Yeah. yeah. And, and dude, really, like, seriously, if if we just had what served us in the closet, we'd be going, all right, so this is my reality. So now <laughs> I get to expand and create like, OK, then the next thing is like, how could those things mix and match? And what are those foundational things? Like if I had a denim jacket, if I had these certain pairs of jeans and Brenda, you were right earlier when you're like, in this time when when we are kind of quarantined in our in our in our space is um, that that op opportunity is we can like live in our sweats and like kind of like bliss out or we could get up and kind of dress up not say you have to be formal but literally um, have some things that are lounge wear or the casual wear that we know that when we put this on we're gonna feel great because studies say get this you guys this this is mind-blowing but there's a study out there that says we actually see ourselves um upwards of 55 times a day our reflection and it's not like by looking in a mirror but it's by walking by the microwave we catch a glimpse of ourselves, and our subconscious talks to ourselves about what we're seeing and you know, we can use those to our benefit to kind of build ourselves up even when we're home. Wow. So, uh, 
How many of you watching this right now, <clears throat> especially in the Seattle area, we're going to experience the rain, but people might be watching this all over. How many of you are feeling inspired to declutter your closet, get a little better organized as well? So uh, tell us yes in the comments if that's something you're inspired to do this week. Hey, Lisa, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. I don't know if this is in your area as well, but uh, could you speak to laundry? Like, <laughs> do you do laundry or would you recommend laundry on a schedule or you just do it when you feel like or any ideas around? Because laundry is really a problem. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess it sounds like something you and your wife may be fine about. Is this? <laughs> yeah, like I, I let mine pile up <laughs> and I get to yeah. it when I get to it. Uh, but yeah, we have a schedule. I don't know. We've got a, uh, Mike Bird is saying, I am for sure doing the declutter, and somebody else, let me look who it is, is actually saying yes as well. So we got some declutterers happening. So, all right, Ooh, laundry. Awesome. What are yeah. best, Lisa's best tips for laundry? You know, this is so good. Uh, so outside of the quarantine situation, mm. right? It It is definitely, you know, knowing what sort of outfits you need for your lifestyle and then having that available, you know, ahead of time. So it's not like last minute we're digging through the, the laundry basket, trying to find a clean shirt to wear. Um, but it's like backing it up to ensure we have enough items to fulfill our week's commitments. Um, so I'm a real fan of a Sunday night self meeting. So it's like a Sunday night with myself. And that's where I do some meal planning and also um, teach clients to think about their activities for the week. And then in that um, creating their outfits or at least having an idea on mm -hmm. Sunday night. So um, Sunday is a really great opportunity to do, uh, you know, clothes washing and and some people dry their clothes other people hang their clothes or if you're doing hand wash or that sort of thing and then um, maybe even friday night uh, is when if you have dry clean drop off on a friday pick up on a monday so you have those things ready to go so that's the system that i just say if you schedule it because if you schedule it it happens, but if we just kind of wing it, then we're kind of, we can get pissed off like, dang, you know, and it makes, it makes the anxiety in the morning of getting dressed stressful, high level stress. And in just a little pre-planning by putting it into our calendar, like, okay, Sunday night, I'm going to look ahead at my outfits and, and back reverse engineer and like, all right, let's put in a load of clothes on Sunday. So you're saying we need to plan for 14 pairs of pajamas for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of like our bed, you know, our beds, like, you know, it's like, how, okay, so I have, a, I have a daughter that does van life. So she lives out of her van and travels, yeah. you know, right? And someone asked her. Like, known as road comics, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> someone asked Actually, her. Road comedians don't have, uh, they can't even afford a van. So anyways. Yeah. <laughs> well, someone asked Jacqueline, they're like, how often do you wash your sheets? And she's like, what? You know, and. <laughs> Kind of the same thing with how often do we wash our clothes? It, like we all have a different thing around hygiene if we wear them multiple times or if we're a one wear bandit, you know, so it all just boils down to personal preference too. Nice. Yeah. I, I got to say that personally, I've been staying way on top of my laundry. I've, <laughs> the last, uh, I've been home for a little bit over a week right now and um I've, I've washed my sheets twice already, which is uh, all my laundry is very clean. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to clean things. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Daytime jammies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brenda, do you have questions for Lisa? Yeah, Lisa, with... Um you know, as I'm looking at my closet, because I, I had the joy of working with Lisa a few years ago, made a huge difference in mm -hmm. in kind of owning who I am and how to reflect that on the outside of me because I was going from corporate to entrepreneurship and I didn't know what to wear. I didn't know who I was really, right? Because they were still, it was before kind of the relaxed wardrobe, you know? And, and so, um, so that was really valuable. And then learning like that to, to ask the question, in the morning, I love that, Lisa, if you could share a little bit about that as like, you know, knowing how you wanna show up, 
what are the words you would use, how you want to show up and, and what is, what's going to serve that? What, how am I going to do that? And then the other thing was, if you could yeah. share a little bit about that. And the other part was um, in the closet, do you, when you, when you bring the things back in, do you put them by color or by short sleeve, long sleeve? How do you do that? How would you so I guess, it, is it personal or do you have a suggestion? Yeah. Oh, you're so good. I just love you so much. Man, you are just, you're just kindred spirit girl. Uh, yes, I do definitely have a methodology that I uh, recommend for the closet. And I give several, you know, ideas for clients, but the one that seems to be used the most that gives uh, people kind of the most clarity to their closet, Brenda, to answer your question is color blocking. And so so if you can imagine, like even think of your closet right now and just think of it from left to right. And the idea is to start with your lightest colored items. So maybe white on the far left and your darkest items, let's say black to the far right. And that expands the length of your closet, let's say for this example. And then within each color is there's a methodology. So it is, starts with tops so it's your 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 sleeveless your short sleeve your long sleeves and then it goes to uh your layering pieces so maybe it's your your jackets and then bottoms and dresses and you kind of complete that throughout all of the colors that you might have mm -hmm. so that's the methodology uh that i typically teach and then uh, to answer your question, Brenda, too, is, yeah, getting dressed in the morning is instead of walking into your closet and just randomly like, what am I going to wear today? You know, kind of just like, what am I going to wear? Like have the the vibes uh, pull you is instead um, command your closet to command your closet to serve you like this is how I want to show up today and really have that centered. Like even this phone call would be super honest with you. It was like, how do I want to show up on this call? And I'm like, you know what? I want to show up on this call like um, like super approachable and, uh, and relevant to the subject. But also I want to show up just as a, as a friend, you know, and as a, uh, someone to be in service. And so you think about it, we have lots of choices in our closet, right? And so I just, I think about it and I teach people like, don't show up randomly, show up with intention and on purpose. Um, and so many of us are going to Zoom calls professionally or online platforms, right? Like, and it's like asking, you like, you you know? I, need, like, I need to go change my clothes right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, no pants, like I'm wearing no, like, okay, yeah. we're possible up here, nothing on the bottom, like, hey. Yeah, don't, you don't need to prove if we're wearing pants or not right now. Nobody needs to know that, so. <laughs> Yeah, but those, those are great comments. Oh, you know? it has saved me so much. I mean, just those little tips have saved me so much in my closet because I went from, oh my God, I have nothing to wear to wait a minute. Yes, I do. I want to show up approachable. I want to show up professional. I want to show up relaxed. I want to show up in service. You know, those help. It's our brains, right? It helps us narrow it down. And then the color blocking. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I, uh, I came up with my own closet system and now I'm like, oh, maybe I'm doing it wrong. But I've also, but I've also been like, I had like an anxiety over like, oh, maybe angst is a better word about like, do my black and white striped shirts, where do they go? Do they go with the whites or the blacks? <laughs> <laughs> Which Just is pick really one, whatever resonates with you. you. Well, and I got my, I, um, when I moved into my place, I was really excited here because it, it it's just a one bedroom, but it's got a walk-in closet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have so much room. It really isn't that much room. But I, I hired somebody on TaskRabbit. That might still be an app you could have actually, where I came in and had, I had somebody add a second row in because it was just one thing all over. And I've got jackets on the bottom, but I do, um, I group by, kind of sleeve length for all my tops. Mm -hmm. So you do like, you know, the the shells and then tanks and then short sleeve and then long sleeve. I group those together. And then within each of those groups, I have uh, the, I do buy the rainbow. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then at the end I put white and black. Um, mm -hmm. But also I'm assuming it's like whatever works for you. But I'm also like, there's part of me that's like, how do I think about what's where? So is it more about just where you know things are, or um, as far as like, if you put your pants and tops together, 
that are all white um, as far as outfit planning? Like, tell me more about how how that works. Yeah, and so that that really becomes it, it's almost like it triggers the brain to rewire how we think about outfits because when our items are color blocked, mm -hmm. the idea is to kind of camp in one color for a moment, and I call it your best friends, like. Okay. See how the best friends can hang out for a second. So for example, if we're in the whites or the creams or those neutrals is to go, wow, what tops in white cream neutral could be paired with bottoms white cream neutral and what jacket could be paired in white cream neutral. And, and I, so you're like doing life with your best friends. And then, mm -hmm. and then the idea is, okay, once I have a top and a bottom paired in that color block, then to look outside to the other colors Mm. Uh, in a, in a mm. scarf or in an accessory to pull that in. And I tell you, it, it clicks in the brain and the brain thinks totally different and then goes, oh my gosh, look at all the things. And if someone does not say, when I work with them in their closet, I would have never paired that together. Mm. Only when they say that I go, okay, now I'm doing my job and have helped them, them, they've done it on their own, open up the brain for possibilities. Instead of, if you think of how we are marketed to each other in terms of retail, retail has everything together. And so oftentimes we come home and we put it in our closet together. Mm -hmm. and that never is a possibility that we can ever break it out to serve us in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of Carol to, to just like, crash that idea, that methodology that we might be used to from marketing and to have it serve us greater in our mm. closet. See, so, now I might have to do a full recloset reorg just to see how this works then. So uh, <laughs> I, I tend to have, I mean, kind of along the themes of like a capsule uh, yeah. wardrobe where I stick with, I stick with certain colors. So I, you know, my brand colors are um, the pink, the purple and green, but then also what goes with that is like camo and animal prints and black and gray and white, of course. And um, so maybe I'll reorganize my whole closet in this methodology and just see what uh, what comes up. So this is great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Any other questions before for Lisa? Uh, those of you watching, you know, if you're in more inspired to reorganize your closet, um, if this is kind of blowing your mind, because I think for a lot of people like they just have stuff hung up in there or maybe it's on the floor like Burundi. I don't know. Um, <laughs> having kind of a uh, mind blown right now. Um, let's see. Jane is saying that uh, um, I saw the closet organizer from the container store in Bellevue, probably back when it was open. Oh boy, it's different times you guys. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, all right. Post your comments for Lisa in there. Um, we're going to go on now to, our special guest. I can only imagine what's just been going all through your mind through this entire thing. Uh, I reach out wow. to you like, I want to be on your show. And I'm like, well, here's an opening. Would you like to be on this? <laughs> like, Why did I pick this one to be on with these women and all these women? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel out of place. Like I <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, organized. I'm, I'm like, wow, you can organize your closet. That was a <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I learned a lot, and I'll I'll try to apply some of it. <laughs> so, uh, Ken, what do you want me to do? It. Like, where do you want me to start? Well, share with us, like, so your take on this whole spring refresh, like, for you know, people that don't know what the comedy life is like for stand-up comedy, like, uh, this has been a like unbelievable shakeup of our lifestyle, right? So. Every yeah. comedy venue for from open mics to shows to theaters to clubs is they're closed down. So all the stand-up comedians out there, they don't have any work anymore. They don't have any way to actually do their art or, or uh, um, their creative outlet. And so this has just been like, everybody's like, what do we do now? So from yeah. all of your income, and you also have a, a room that you produce shows at too. So all of your income is like mm, done. Um, yeah. So how, how are you using this time as a reset for yourself? Like what are, how are you, what's, what's happening for you right now? Um, a few things are happening uh, for starters uh, as I don't know if this helps, but it, it's worked for me. So I think it might work for other people. 
which is uh, this is a good time to manage your web consum consumption, like what you consume on the internet, uh, especially right now with uh, um, what's the the thing that's going on. You know, they've been taking down videos that say the thing. Um, <laughs> Can we say no, yeah, that's great? Actually, I love the fact that we haven't even mentioned that yet. This is good. This time, yeah. this is very generic things like, well, at this time in the world, yeah, at <laughs> this time, yeah, yeah, with the, with you know the the um, the Rona. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> woman, that woman Rona is so annoying. Yeah, one thing I've done is uh, I've been managing my internet consumption. So I don't know if people know this, but you can actually, you don't need all the updates. Like most people think they need to keep a body count and <laughs> like uh, keeping track of all the positive cases and all that stuff. It's like I've deactivated most of that on my on my uh, YouTube, my Facebook. Um, yeah, just trying to just trying to have a positive experience online. Mm -hmm. So that has helped me out a lot. You can always if you are looking for information. Um, the CDC website is always up. You can check in at least once a week mm -hmm. and know when it's time to go out or, when, <laughs> or if we're still inside. Um, mm -hmm. But most of the updates that are coming through day by day, you don't, we don't need them. Mm -hmm. Especially if, you, if you're if you feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling depressed, or just, um, you know, if, if you don't know what to do, uh, you can tune out. Like you will know when it's time to when life is back to normal. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's one thing I'd recommend. And there are many resources online as far as how you can um, customize your experience online. Uh, so for instance, I have a separate email for work, a separate Gmail for work. And when I'm on that one, it, it, none of that stuff comes through because I'm at work. And then I have a separate one for comedy. So when I'm doing comedy stuff. I get comedy recommendations. I get uh, articles about comedy. I don't get anything about work. I don't get anything about the Rona or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of, uh, I work, I kind of work in tech, but not really. So uh, I'm, I'm in tune with algorithms and how to use your browsers effectively. <clears throat> so that would be something for people to explore, I think. Um, the second I love that. For those of you that are watching now or the replay, like, you know, if this resonates with you as far as like, maybe you could tune down the amount of, uh, you know, times you're checking in on that. Or if you're already doing that, if you're limiting the amount just to give yourself peace of mind and a reset. So just tell us in the comments there if that's resonating with you. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is kind of connected to it, which is... There's a lot of funny content online right now, yeah. both old stuff and new stuff. Yeah, because you have, of course, the, the old stuff, uh, Netflix, YouTube, Instagram, whatever it is. But now, because comedians are not able to go out and work, most of them are online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you're looking for a break from all the misery and the day-to-day -day updates, there's a ton of content online. Mm -hmm. And now is, you have the time. Now is a good time to consume it. So check it out. Uh, I don't have much online, but a lot of my comedy friends do. And uh, as always, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, there's a ton of funny stuff that you can watch to take your brain off of, off of the stress. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. great. I love that. What are So what are you doing personally for to fill your creative needs like how are you shifting and adjusting and resetting right now um to still have your creative expression oh yeah um i don't know i i i i, I can tell you guys don't watch uh ufc like <laughs> <laughs> what a what a hear me out hear me out on us no i don't watch it <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. And part of the reason I appreciate it is because those athletes, they pace themselves. So mm -hmm. let's say if they're, if they're preparing for a fight and they, they sprain their foot, they say they can't kick, they'll do all upper body stuff. So they, they adapt to their situations. So if, if you have a sprained ankle, that doesn't mean no training. 
It means you can go train, but you do upper body. So that's how I feel as a comedian. Mm. I feel like I can't do the stage stuff. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not about UFC. This is not about UFC. It's about um, adapting to your situations. You're getting the most comments of all right now about the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> is the UFC still happening? Like every other sport is shut down. Is that? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I don't think this is only true. Uh, okay. Forget UFC. It's true for <laughs> every sport. You adapt. Like if you're a soccer mm -hmm. player and you injure your legs, you don't stop working out. There are other things you can work on. You can do video analysis, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can study your games or other people's games and see what you're supposed to be working on. So that's what I'm doing as a comedian. I know I cannot go on stage, but there are other aspects of the of the business that I can work on. So I just finished my um, I just finished my YouTube course, like how to build your YouTube channel, how to optimize it, how to build a following. Uh, that was like an eight hour course. I finished that last week. All right. That's and, part of why you're here today too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm also, now I'm taking a screenwriting class. Okay. Yeah, trying to figure out how to write a screenplay. Um, that's going to take a while, but I'm reading a ton of stuff. I'm watching a ton of stuff about writing screenplays, analyzing uh, screenplays. And hopefully by next week, I'll probably start writing my own. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So it, yeah. Well, it's it's a really interesting time because we've gone through a wave of like disbelief and uh, mourning, and then you you see the resilient people coming through right now with their mm -hmm. their creative people, uh, the resilient, and they're just adapting and you know channeling their creativity, their skills mm -hmm. in other things. So like, yeah, doesn't surprise me at all. You're like you're one of the <laughs> Best sale, well, one of the best sale of comedians out there. And so, like, great to see that you're instead of just going to be like, give up, I might as well just hide under a blanket and eat Cheetos for the next <laughs> seven months. Like, you're like, all right, I'm going to take this opportunity to learn and reset yeah. and refocus. And yeah, that's great. Well, guess what? This, uh, whatever is going on right now, as far as the, the comedy game, mm. it's going to go on for <laughs> six months. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if you had a chance to read um, Roy Woods Jr. He's one of the correspondents on The Daily Show. Okay, yeah, I've listened to a lot of his podcasts, yeah. He wrote an article in The Vulture. I, I can send you a link after the call, but it's it's going to be a long haul. It, it it is. I mean, I've, I listen to, I mean, I'm, my day job is in, you know, with this keto thing is in the healthcare field and I listen to medical professionals, uh, podcasts and um you know part of what people aren't really talking about is part of flattening the curve is actually extending it so you yeah. know we don't know if it's going to be 12 18 months it might be less it might be more um it's it's you know this isn't going to resolve and we have the fantasy that like oh just stay home for 14 days and then this will be all back to normal it, it's not we're in this for the long haul and so people have to uh you know yeah. we've got to adapt and yeah, well, what I was getting at, there's also going to be a mobility of uh, of uh, talent and labor. So, <laughs> John, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have people, like, you're going to have, uh, like, some of us are going to compete with people in grocery stores for their jobs. Um, now, same my son works at Whole Foods, so don't you take his job. He's <laughs> That's the economy that we're going in. People are going to be competing for the same spots, yeah, including comedy. So in our case, we're going to have uh, writers. They're going to come and try to do a comedy, and we are going to try to go do their jobs. It's going to be, it's going to be tough for the next six months or so. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you need you need a an extensive list of things that you can do in whatever field you're in. Yeah, but. That's it. That's so how I Brenda and Lisa, what questions do you have for Barunji? Totally different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a question for you. Very different yeah. than you guys in a lot of different ways. So in your career and everything, in life experience. So what, what questions do you guys have for him? 
Yeah, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, so my son is studying uh, screenwriting and acting in uh, Arizona right now. And we just had a Zoom conversation today with the entire family. And uh, and he was talking about, you know, his instructors um, saying, you know, this is a great time to be on Instagram and be like sharing your gifts. And, uh, you know, when you can't meet people one on one or that sort of thing. So I'm just so curious to uh, what you might be doing on social media. And I, I mean, what a great time to I, I just think as a comedian, what a great time to entertain, yeah. you know, and so I'm just I'm just super curious. I'm just meeting you for the first time here on this platform. So, yeah, help me understand more of how to work with you and find you and what you're up to. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I do not. The Carol can attest to this. Uh, right now, I do not do a lot online. Uh, we, we're in this weird space. We've always been in this weird space as comedians where you create a product and it's best consumed in person. Person. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes when if you put it online, then they consume it. Uh, Carol makes like food plans and all that stuff. It's about the same thing. Like some people want just the, you print it out the PDF and then they never want to talk to you ever again. <laughs> wow. So it's a weird balance, but I think uh, this predicament and also the era we're in, you kind of have to be online in some way. So mm -hmm. one thing I've had, I do have some things online, but one thing I've been thinking about is kind of like the 80, 20 or 60, 40 rule. So like you could put up 20% of your product and then have them show up for the other 80% in person. Uh, or if you're ambitious, you could put up 40% and then 60% is stuff that they have to come to a show um, to consume. So it's a delicate balance. Um, social media is weird. <laughs> it's, it's not weird if, if you're young, if you're young. How old is your son? He's 21. Oh yeah, those twenty-one-year-olds. They have nothing to fear. They're <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 know how to play the game. Like I'm I'm in my thirties, um, mm -hmm. so we we're we're also comfortable with social media, but not as comfortable as the young kids. Mm -hmm. um, and there's always a new platform coming out. Um, Kara's on TikTok. You know that. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. I'm not a star. I don't have. I, my next goal is to get a thousand likes on there. I'm at 641 last I looked, but yeah. It's Ooh, yay. <laughs> yeah. So like TikTok is weird. It's different. And uh, I just signed up for it. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work, to be honest. I wish it was just about going on stage, perform, get the laughs, go home. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you got to do more. Um it's I, I would be lying if I say I enjoy that side of the business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's necessary. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's 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 very different. I I have a lot of well-meaning people in my life that are like, "Well, just go do your jokes live on the internet. Like that'll work, right?" It's like people don't really understand that like live stand-up comedy is. There's this dance with the audience, and part of the delivery is you're riding the energy wave of the laughs of the audience, and you you need that. And that's there's a reason why you know all the Netflix specials you see there's a live audience there, and and the mm -hmm. '80s sitcoms had a laugh track or they had a live audience. Like there's yeah. that's part of what makes it funny is hearing other people laugh. And so mm -hmm. if I just sat here and told jokes, and part of the reason why Burundi is not going to tell jokes right now is just it's it's just it's it's not the same and it just seems like, oh, that's not as funny. <laughs> yeah. So you, it, go ahead. You need context. Um, yeah. And usually with us, like Carol, myself and the other local comedians or comedians in other states or cities is you're still building a brand. You are still uh, building uh, a presence. Mm -hmm. And so some of the stuff might be funny, but because people don't have a point of reference for you, it's hard to connect to what you're saying. Uh, whereas if, uh, once you're on TV or you, you make an appearance on TV, then people have a reference. They're like, Oh, that's the guy we saw in, uh, this movie. That's the guy we saw in this sitcom. And now he's talking about this. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're a person like right now, I'm new to you. If I started talking about some of the stuff I talk about, you'd be like, Ooh, 
this guy. <laughs> What's going yeah. on? <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's. Oh, hey, hey, Barunji, here's a comment for you right now. What do you think about this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, John says comedians need hecklers. Some of the best, that's some some of the best comedy. That that sounds like something a heckler would say. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, hecklers are not bad. Hecklers are not bad. Um, there's hecklers in in comedy. There's hecklers in sport. Um, they're good, but th there's a there's a limit. <laughs> it's a healthy relationship. Like some some of my best bits got better because someone heckled. Mm. You know, echo, and then you you figure out why they heckled, and then you go back and write, and then make it better. So now, now I don't give John the idea that he needs to heckle more, but also <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's um not a not every heckler. I, personally, I have a, a three strike rule, or sometimes it's more. Uh, I do not acknowledge every heckler. Mm. Yeah, so if you heckle the first time, I let it go. Second time, I let it go. Third time, I let it go. After that, I might address it. Yeah. Yeah, but not every person that says something at you while you're on stage is a hater. Some of them think they're helping. <laughs> <laughs> and in that moment, you really can't stop the show and explain that, hey, uh, that's not how it works. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't have to address all of them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, I just wonder with all, um, you know, so many people doing like uh, video or Zoom happy hours or some something like that. It's like, hey, what about having a comedian come in? You know, because um, pretty pretty soon people are gonna have like, okay, what are we gonna be talking about? Or you know, I don't know. Um, I can imagine like people having guest speakers come in. I I just wonder if that could could be something fun to do something different think of something new you know that mean yeah. that they mean well but also uh you know how how much to offset how much you make on one show as a feature how many yeah we have to charge you guys so much you guys wouldn't would yeah. like, yeah. yeah. let's see what's that say now i was in seattle at a piff the magic dragon oh my gosh Burunji, you know that guy when he put the heckler in his place, that video went viral. That guy was on, uh, what was it like? America's Got Talent or something like that? Wow. Was Magic it? Did you ever what's see that guy, Baruji? No. What's that? What's his name? It, uh, he went by Piff the Magic Dragon. He was on, I think he was on America's Got Talent, and uh, he dressed like in this dragon costume, but he had like a deadpan delivery. Uh, yeah. I think British accent, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, no, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. yeah, so he was on that America's Got Talent, and then he toured the country for a while. So, yeah, and then he lit up a, a heckler. Wow, yeah, well, <laughs> behind every successful heckler story, there is at least 10 that didn't work out for <laughs> either. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Uh. Well, I think it's about time to wrap this up. So, uh, yeah, John saying it was America's Got Talent. All right. So um, the way I've been ending these episodes, and again, thank you all for watching, whether you're live or you're watching the replay. Um, what? So the way that you can thank us for this is if you share this group with others, invite other people to join us. Every single night, 7 p.m. Pacific time, I'm going live with an episode of this. And we're going to do the same structure. We've got three different guests. And so far, I've got uh, one of those spots is going to be a comedian. So bringing out the uh, different perspectives of the world and some humor. So, um, so thank you all for watching. Also, we're going to wrap this up. But also, please share with other people this group. So the way that we wrap this up is what I call the lightning bolt round. And this is the way I wrap up, wrap up my coaching calls as well. So each of you just take a turn and share with us your your own personal aha on this call, your takeaway, or whatever it is that you'd like to say to wrap this up. Brenda, you want to start? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Well, you know what? I learned a little bit more about comedy, about, about the background of it. You know what I mean? And that was really important because it makes sense now why I don't laugh at some of these comedians' jokes because I don't know their story. 
<laughs> right? You just helped me. That just helped me so much understand that. And mm -hmm. that, you know, to find somebody, let's do that. Let's follow them and, and understand the storyline. That makes yeah. sense to me. Thank you for sharing that. And of course, Lisa, I'm going to color block because I've gotten away from my color blocking my closet. <laughs> 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 that's awesome that's awesome it's so good you know brenda i agree with you i too um it's so nice to you know to me can you can you pronounce your first name for me brenji is that correct Am yeah birunji birunji it's yeah. so nice to, to meet you that we just went to a comedy on uh, the tacoma comedy uh club uh oh, this last summer with a group of friends and had so much fun and i was like why haven't we been doing more of this? It was such fun. We sat in the very front and we got, you know, Ooh. this interact. Oh, let me tell you. And had a blast. And um, it's just so interesting to hear like what life is like during, you know, this pandemic and how we're dealing with life and, and to hear it from your perspective. And I really, really, really appreciate it. And my brain is going to work like, how can I support you? And, yeah. and um, I, I think it's going to be so many creative ideas and new normals. And I just want to say like, you helped me to, in just to expand my my brain around this. And um, Brenda, um, I wrote down a couple of names of people that I need to do a check in with wow. and, and spend some time with and just like share my heart. And, and we have the time and um, I, it kind of makes me emotional. It's like, I, <laughs> there's going to be some good conversations and some like connection. And uh, I just want to thank you. So it, it, yeah, it's like, this is like, it's almost like God's given us this time to um, figure some things out mm -hmm. and to make use of this time, you know? And so I just appreciate this. And Carol, just thank you girl yeah. um, for this platform. So it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, you're welcome. Nice. Uh, my turn, right? <laughs> uh, thanks ladies. I'm glad I was part of this. Um, I learned a lot. Um, Obviously, as a comedian, I, I feel dirty as a comedian when I talk to normal people. <laughs> now, I'm not kidding. Like, uh, so some of the things I, I would definitely try to apply. Um, like, I like Brenda's points about uh, forgiveness. Um, you know, I, Carol can tell you, comedians, we're very dramatic and we have all kinds of small drama and small things going on. And uh, it's nice to, to get the, the other perspective that, you know, you can let things go. You can forgive yourself. If you mess up, you can forgive, um, you know, you can forgive the situation, move on, try something else another day. So thanks, Brenda. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lisa. Uh, yep. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have a lot of work to do, given what you just said. <laughs> Laundry and closet and clean out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, at least I know I, I know what to tell my wife. Like, she, <laughs> she I can't know. wait to hear how that goes. <laughs> yeah, keep in touch. Keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Why if I learn how you should organize your closet? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know how that goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. <laughs> I, my takeaway, I'm actually going to do, so I do a lot of the gratitude stuff now. That's part of, part of how I've been coping through all this as well. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm just going to take the time. I'm going to redo my entire closet. I'm going to do the color blocking. So at least I can't wait. Cause I'm going to show, I'm going to take photos before and after. And uh, I like, I'm one of those girls. I'm like, I want to make Lisa proud. So I'm going to show her. <laughs> all right. You're yeah. on. Love it. Um, Burundi, now, knowing, knowing what you're setting and stuff like that, I'm going to share some other stuff with you as well. Some other things that I've been setting and people, especially on YouTube that I follow and stuff like that. So yeah. I'll share that with you too. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone that's been here. Thank you everyone that's been watching. Again, if you want to, if you've enjoyed this, please share the group with your friends uh, every single night, 7 p.m. Also, when people come to the group, you can watch all the past episodes as well. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. Thank you all for taking the time out of your super busy schedule. That's so booked right now. Thank you all so much. And if you've got other guests that you'd like to see on here, please let me know. 
Um, but that's all we've got for tonight. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Have a good night. Happy spring. Yes. <laughs> Take care.